Number 16. Alice needs to visit the dentist. Her dentist will charge her $50 for the initial visit and then $35 for the following visits. So it is the minimum and maximum number of visits that she can have if she can afford to spend between $295 and $470. So let's start with the lower limit. She wants to spend more than $295. It's going to cost $50 for the first visit and then $35 for each follow-up. So X is going to be the follow-up visits. Subtracting 50 from both sides gives us 245 should be less than or equal to 35X. Dividing both sides by 35 gives us that she can do seven or more follow-up visits. We also know that she wants to spend less than 470. So her cost should be smaller than or equal to $470. It's still going to cost $50 for the first visit, and $35 for each follow-up. Subtracting 50 from both sides leaves us with 420 should be greater than or equal to 35x. Divide both sides by 35 and we get that 12 should be greater than or equal to x. So it's important to note that these are the actual follow-up visits. They do not include the initial visit. So her actual visits can be between 8 and 13, since we do have to consider the initial visit back in. Number 17. The stock for Verizon begins the day on Monday at $13.50 per share. If Samuel purchases 20 shares of stock on Monday and it gains 45 cents per day per share for five days, how much does he have in his Verizon stock portfolio on Friday? Well, first, let's figure out how much these have increased. They increased 45 cents for five days. So each share has went up $2.25. Since they start the week at $13.50 and we've had a 2.25 increase, on Friday, they're worth $15.75 apiece. Since we don't have one of these, Samuel has 20 of these, we'll multiply by 20 to determine the total cost of the portfolio, which is $315. Number 18. Jenny was overdrawn on her account showing a bank balance of negative $38, and the bank charged her a fee of $30 for being overdrawn. What is her current bank balance? Well, it was negative 38, and they have charged her $30, so we subtract out another $30. So her bank balance would be negative $68. Number 19. Sam is a customer at Citizens Bank. Each time he writes a check for insufficient funds, he is charged $50. Sam has $230 in his account, and he writes checks for $18.84, $116.22, $42.13, $93.17, and $13.12. What is his current balance? So we just need to balance his checkbook. He starts with $230, and the first check is for $18.84. This leaves a balance of $211.16. His next check is worth $116.22. This gives $94.94. The third check is $42.13. This leaves him with $52.81. The next check was worth $93.17. And he's now getting overdrawn. His balance is negative $40.36. Since he wrote a check, for insufficient funds, his bank is going to charge him $50. So now his balance is negative $90.36. He writes one final check for $13.12. This leaves a balance of negative 103.48. Since he wrote a second check for insufficient funds, his bank will charge him another $50. And so his final balance is negative 100. 
$53.48. Number 20. The formula for the volume of a pyramid is V equal to one-third BH, where B represents the base and H represents the height. We want to solve for H in terms of B and V. So let's start with dealing with the fraction. We'll multiply both sides by 3. On the left we get 3V, and since 3 times one-third is 1, on the right we're left with BH. Since we want to solve for H, we need to get rid of the B, so we'll divide. We have 3V divided by B is equal to H. Part B. We know that the volume is 52 cubic meters, and we know that the base is 12 meters. We want to know how tall the pyramid is. Well, from part A, we know that 3 times the volume divided by the base is equal to the height. 3 times 52 is 156 divided by 12, which gives us a height of 13 meters.